In this video, we're gonna be working on an Atwood machine problem. We have a six kilogram mass M1 that's sitting on the surface of a table and is being pulled by M2, a two kilogram mass hanging over the edge of a table. And it says, what is the tension of the string if the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2? So finding the tension of the string is actually one of the trickier things to solve for in one of these problems. So you're gonna have to take multiple steps to get there, but I'll break it down so hopefully it won't seem as complicated. So just like with every force problem, our very first step is going to be to draw all of our force vectors and draw the diagram for M1 and M2. All right, so I've completed my force diagram. I have four forces acting on M1 and just two acting on M2. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna set up your sum of forces in the X and Y direction. But for this one, it's a little bit unique because they can be pulled as one big system or you can identify two separate smaller systems. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at M1 and M2 as one large cohesive system. So everything within that green dotted line is gonna be our big blob that's gonna be moving together. And then we can set up the sum of forces for that whole entire system. Now the thing about these types of problems that is tricky is that everything in the direction of its motion is considered a particular sign. For example, everything going in this direction is positive and anything going in the opposite direction, which would be upward from here or left from here is in the negative direction. Okay? That usually trips people up because down here, FG, a lot of times we consider that to be the negative direction. But if you're saying everything that's moving the whole system is going this way, then going down is actually positive. Okay, so that is one of the big, big differences in this type of problem compared to a lot of the other force problems. All right, so as this big, large system, you're just taking a look at all the external forces. Okay, so you're not taking a look at all of these forces inside here. So basically you can ignore your FT because that's internal. So as far as external forces, we have FG pulling it. We have force of kinetic friction slowing it down. And then we have FG and FN, which are, which are going to be canceling each other out. So over here, I'm gonna set up the, some of the forces for this large system. All right, so I've set up the sum of forces for my big system, which I'll just call M1 plus M2. So the whole system is eight kilograms. So I excluded the normal force and the force of gravity because those aren't gonna be very helpful in helping me determine the acceleration or anything about the motion of the entire system. So I'll just kind of keep it simple and do the sum of the forces that go along this sort of like curved axis here. And then we have FG that's helping propel it. So that's in the positive direction. And then FFK is the only one that's opposing it. So minus force of kinetic friction equals our mass times acceleration. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same exact thing for my M1 and my M2. My M1, I am gonna need the sum of forces in the X and Y direction. And then for M2, I'm just gonna need the sum of forces in the Y direction.
All right, so I have my formulas set up for each of my individual masses, which I color coded in purple for M2 and red for M1. And then I also have the sum of forces for the entire system treated like one big eight kilogram block. Okay, so our M1 would be sort of typical of how we would set up our sum of forces. We have FT that's pulling it to the right. FFK would be our negative direction that equals M times A. And then normal force minus force of gravity equals zero because there is no vertical movement or acceleration. And then for M2, remember one of the things that is sort of unique about this problem is that I made my FG positive because my positive direction, remember, is flowing along in the direction that my system is moving. So FG is actually positive and then FT is going to be my negative. And then that equals M times A. When you do the calculations a little bit later, because you have a bunch of different individual objects and systems, you wanna make sure you plug in the correct mass. So your M2 is only referring to your two kilogram mass. Your M1 is only referring to your six kilogram mass. And then your big system is referring to eight. So if you plug in an M for the M times A portion, you wanna make sure you're very careful about plugging in the correct M because there's various formulas that we're we'll plugging into. Okay, so in my experience, it is always the easiest to start off over here, okay? The reason being um, is that it sort of allows us to get our acceleration first, which is gonna be very useful so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work over in my green section and actually slightly in my red section, you'll see why in a second, and then we'll move forward trying to find our tension. So I finished solving everything in green. I did bounce over to the red section for M1. I'll explain why in a second. So you have to really pay attention to what's focusing on an individual mass and what things are being focused on the system. So our FG for the system is this FG. Okay, We're not going to use 8 as our mass because we don't have 8 kilograms hanging off the edge pulling our entire system. This FG is just representative of the force of gravity pulling down on M2. So I wanna make sure that I use the mass of M2, which is two. So two times 9.8 for that FG. And then the force of kinetic friction is up here. The force of kinetic friction is only affecting this block right here. So I'm gonna use the formula um, mu times normal force to find my force of kinetic friction. They told us the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2, so I was able to plug that in immediately. And then I know I wanted the Fn for M1. That's why I slid over here. As I looked at my M1 formulas, I noticed that there's Fn in only one spot. And typically that's really easy to find when something is sitting flat on a horizontal surface. So I took the mass of M1, which is six times 9.8, and then I was able to plug that in for FG and then FN ended up equaling FG. So my normal force is 58.8. I slid back over here, was able to plug in my FN for block one and then complete my calculation. So I took my FG, subtracted my force of kinetic friction, and then I divided both sides by eight. So 0 0.98 meters per second squared is the acceleration for my green formula, for my red one, 
and my purple one because everything is moving together. So at this point, whether you look at it as a large system or individual system, everything is moving together at 0 0.98 meters per second squared. Okay? That's why I solve for that one first because it's something helpful that applies to all the different formulas that I'm using. All right, from there, I wanna solve for FT. So I see an FT right over here, and I see an FT right over here, okay? It actually turns out, it doesn't matter which one you solve for. So you actually just sort of pick one and then plug in numbers. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll maybe solve for both of them just to double check to make sure I get the same answer. Um, but really they're, they're representing the same FT, they're the same tension throughout this string. One of them is acting on M2 and then one of them is acting on M1, but they should be the same value. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve for my FT and then that will complete our problem. All right, so I've completed solving for the FT in both my purple formula and my red one. Um, a few details to point out is that now that I'm focusing on M2, that is the two kilogram mass. So I'm gonna multiply two times 9.8 for my FG. My FT is my unknown for my mass. Again, we wanna focus on that two kilograms. I got my acceleration of the entire system over here. And if the entire system moves at with an acceleration of 0.98 meters per second squared than each of the individual parts does as well. So I multiplied two times 9.8, subtracted it from both sides, and then I got negative FT equals negative 17.64 Newtons, and then the negatives drop, which gives me an answer of 17.64. I went up here, I did the same sort of thing, except I focused on my six kilogram mass, I didn't know my FT, so I went ahead and put FT. And then for my force of kinetic friction, I have 0.2 for my coefficient of kinetic friction, normal force of 58.8, which we solved for earlier, equals six times that same 0.98 acceleration. And then same thing, just did a little algebra, multiply these out, and then added it to the other side. And I got exactly 17.64 Newtons on the dot. Okay, so generally, if you if you calculate both of those and they come out to be the same thing, you could be pretty sure that you set up your work pretty well. Okay, so that concludes on how to solve an Atwood machine problem. If you have any type of Atwood machine problems, really the main thing is to be able to identify which way is your positive and negative and then treating everything as one large system and individual systems based on your needs. So if you do have an Atwood problem that does look like this, you can use the same exact approach that I did, but then again, everything going in a particular direction is gonna be positive. Okay, so if everything is moving in this direction, all of this stuff is considered positive and everything in the other direction would be considered negative. Again, that's one of the, the tricky and unique details for Atwood machine problems, but this type of problem would have been solved exactly like the one I showed you a second ago, um, but it, it just has a slightly different look to it. All right, so that's it. Thank you for watching and listening.